Hello and welcome to Ask the Consistory, a video podcast produced by the Confessional Orthodox Evangelical Lutheran Communion. I'm your host for this video, Reverend Jake Zabel of the St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church, located in Dolby, Queensland, Australia. Our question for this video is, did Christ take on fallen flesh, or did Christ assume to himself a fallen or sinful human nature? Now, such a teaching first arose in the 19th century in the Scottish church by a theologian known as Edward Irving. This doctrine was later picked up by the Reformed theologian Karl Barth and popularised by his student Thomas Torrance. But this doctrine has not stayed in the Reformed Church, but has spread to Lutheranism and Roman Catholicism and to Eastern Orthodoxy and other churches in general. Now, Barth and Torrance both made it clear that Christ did not sin by bearing this sinful human nature. They simply argue that Christ's human nature was a fallen nature, and that in order to redeem humanity, Christ had to bear the same fallen nature that we humans bear. Now, the issue I find with such a belief lies in the understanding of what makes human nature fallen. Because human nature, or human flesh, is not in and of itself fallen or sinful. God created Adam and Eve without sin and called them a good creation. Similarly, Jesus was able to be human without committing sin. Hence why Bath and Torrance call this a fallen human nature. But what makes my human nature a fallen nature? What makes it different to the pre-fallen nature of Adam? And the answer to this is original sin. Romans chapter 5 verses 12 and verse 19 states that through Adam sin entered the world, and that through Adam's disobedience humans were made sinners. What makes our human nature fallen is that we bear original sin. That the image of God is now marred with the image of Adam. Genesis 5.3 states that Adam's son was born in Adam's likeness, after Adam's image. And 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 49 speaks of humanity bearing the image of the man of dust, Adam. And that we are to put off the image of the old man and to be clothed in the image of Christ instead. So, I think the biggest issue with this question, did Christ assume a fallen human nature, lies in the fact that the difference between a fallen human nature and a sinless human nature is that the former is corrupted with original sin. Now, forgive me for not knowing this, but I'm not sure how Bath or Torrance understood the connection of original sin with their view of Christ bearing a fallen human nature. See, Edward Irvin, who started this whole debate, taught that Christ took on sinful human flesh and that Christ had the urges and desires to commit sin but that he just never acted on them, that Christ managed to overcome these urges. From my research, it appears that Bath and Torrance took a more modified view and didn't go to this extreme, but I'm not really sure what their position actually teaches in this regard. Now, the issue with Irving's view is that he did acknowledge that it is original sin, or concupiscence, or the desire to sin, that makes our human nature sinful or fallen. And so the issue is that Irving taught that Christ had the desire to sin, but that he overcame this desire. Hence, Irving taught that Christ had original sin. This is the issue with this doctrine. See, the Roman Catholics and other theologians do not believe that original sin is sin itself, but merely the cause of our sin. For the Roman Catholics, the desire to sin is not sinful. Hence why they teach that only homosexual acts are sinful, but that homosexual orientation is not sinful. But this is not the Lutheran or even the biblical view of original sin. For Lutherans, original sin is sin itself, as we read in Article 2 of the Augsburg Confession. Furthermore, it is taught among us that since the fall of Adam, all human beings who are born in the natural way are conceived and born in sin. This means that from birth they are full of evil lust and inclination and cannot by nature possess true fear of God and true faith in God, 
Moreover, this same innate disease and original sin is truly sin and condemns to God's eternal wrath all who are not in turn born anew through baptism and the Holy Spirit. The Lutheran confessions make it clear that original sin is truly sin and it does condemn us. And the scriptures proclaim this. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 and 28, Jesus says that not only adultery is sin, but even the lustful thought is sin. Additionally, in Romans chapter 5, verse 19, it says that through Adam's disobedience, we are made sinners. It doesn't say that we were given the ability to sin. It says that we are sinners. Original sin means that we are, in fact, sinners. Therefore, if Christ was to have a sinful human flesh, if he had sinful desires, concupiscence, or original sin, then he would be a sinner. But Hebrews chapter 2 verse 17 and chapter 4 verse 15 teaches that Christ became like us in every way, but without sin. Now some will point to statements from Luther and others that Christ became the worst sinner. This is true. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 says that God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. But this did not happen in the incarnation by Christ taking on sinful human flesh. This happened in the crucifixion when the sins of the world were laid upon Christ. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6 speaks of the crucifixion and it says that God has laid on him the sins of us all. And Colossians chapter 2 verse 14 speaks of Christ taking away our debt by nailing it to the cross. In John chapter 1 verse 29, John the Baptist calls Christ the sacrificial lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And if we turn to the Levitical laws, the priest would place his hands on the sacrificial animal just before the slaughter, placing upon it the sins of the people. Jesus did become for us sin. But he did this not in the incarnation, but in his crucifixion, where the sins of the world were laid upon him. And now the final argument on this matter is that in the incarnation, Jesus took on the flesh of Mary. And since Mary was a sinner, then Jesus took on sinful human flesh. Now in the Lutheran Confessions, in the Formula of Concord, in the Epitome, Article 12.3, and in the Sola Declaration, Article 12.25, and also in the Athanasian Creed, it teaches that Christ received his flesh and blood from Mary. But regarding the question as to whether Jesus received a sinful human nature when he received his flesh and blood from Mary, Augustine of Hippo wrote of this in his On Merit and the Forgiveness of Sins and the Baptism of Infants, where he writes, Having become man, but still continuing to be God, Christ never had any sin, nor did he assume the flesh of sin, though born of a maternal flesh of sin. For what he then took on, he either cleansed in order to take it on, or cleansed it by taking it on. So Augustine clearly teaches that Christ did not assume a fallen human nature. Instead, Christ cleansed the human fallen nature of his mother, either before he took it on, or by taking it on. Personally, I prefer the latter suggestion, simply because we are cleansed by our union with Christ, so too it would make sense that Christ cleansed the human flesh from Mary by uniting it with his own divine nature. So I think it is clear from Scripture, the Lutheran Confessions, and also from Augustine, that Jesus did not take on a sinful human flesh. Christ did not assume to himself a sinful, fallen human nature. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video, and I hope you have a very happy Advent and a very Merry Christmas. I've been your host, Reverend Jake Zabel. Goodbye, and God bless.